Today, we present a fresh osteochondral allograft transplantation via medial malleolar osteotomy for an osteochondral lesion of the talus. The patient, a 16-year-old male, presented with a several-year history of right ankle pain following an ankle fracture at age 13. At initial presentation to an outside provider, he was diagnosed with medial ankle pain due to a medial Taylor dome osteochondral lesion. His exam revealed a stable ankle. He underwent six months of supervised physical therapy without relief. When this failed, the surgeon performed an ankle arthroscopy, fragment excision, and an augmented microfracture, followed by appropriate rehabilitation. One year after this surgery, the patient presented with continued pain and effusions, as well as newer mechanical symptoms. His physical exam demonstrated a stable ankle and medial joint line tenderness. Plain imaging and MRI were performed, demonstrating a stage 4-5 to five lesion according to both the Burnt and Hardy and Heppel classifications. Sagittal T2 series shows the medial Taylor dome lesion with a depressed and sclerotic subchondral base, associated bony edema, an absent fragment, and heterogeneous fill consistent with fibrocartilage. Axial T1 imaging demonstrates a central medial to posterior medial location and an estimated 10 millimeter diameter. The patient and his parents were counseled regarding treatment options, including non-operative care, revision arthroscopy and debridement, or osteochondral grafting procedures. Osteochondral lesions of the talus can involve varying amounts of articular cartilage, large OLTs, are considered lesions greater than 1.5 centimeters in size. They can occur on either the medial or lateral aspect of the Taylor dome. The medial malleolar osteotomy allows perpendicular access to the medial Taylor dome when treating these lesions. The osteotomy, however, violates the weight-bearing portion of the tibial plafond. While various osteotomy techniques and fixation methods are described, it is critical to fix this osteotomy anatomically upon completion. For these purposes, we prefer a chevron osteotomy. When evaluating patients for this surgical procedure, patient selection should include an evaluation of the lesion size, the articular surface integrity, fragment displacement, the presence of cystic changes, the patient's symptoms, and any prior treatment. Our surgical indications include a failure of a prior arthroscopic or cartilage restoration procedure, large osteochondral lesions involving the shoulder of the talus, large osteochondral lesions with expansive subchondral cysts, and any OLT measuring greater than 1.5 centimeters in diameter. Contraindications for the surgery include diffuse osteochondral changes or arthrosis, bipolar kissing lesions, or AVN of the Taylor dome. The patient is positioned supine. Staging arthroscopy may be performed, if desired, to evaluate the lesion or address additional pathology. A curvilinear incision is planned starting 3 to 4 inches proximal to the tip of the medial malleolus. The saphenous vein is protected and mobilized and small branches are ligated as needed. The medial tibia is exposed. A chevron osteotomy is planned and marked with a bovi, protecting the posterior tibialis tendon. The apex is centered anteroposteriorly and its proximal to distal location is planned to allow perpendicular access to the Taylor dome. For larger or more central lesions, a more proximal apex may be required. MRI templating and intraoperative fluoroscopy can be helpful in planning this apex and, as demonstrated here, to evaluate the planned exit point within the plafond. An oscillating microsaw with a thin blade is used to initiate the cortical cuts under fluoroscopic guidance. Use of a thin blade prevents significant loss of bone and resulting joint incongruity during reduction. Multiple small osteotomes are then impacted sequentially to the level of the subchondral plate without completing the osteotomy. Guide pins for cannulated malleolar screws are pre-positioned and over-drilled. Subchondral osteotomy is completed carefully to avoid additional injury. The anterior capsule and the flexor sheath posteriorly are carefully incised. And the medial malleolus is reflected over the deltoid ligament distally, exposing the lesion. The lesion demonstrates a chondral fissure and with a curette, a mobile fibrocartilaginous flap is demonstrated. 
the edges are defined and the loose flap is sharply excised, and any underlying fibrous tissue is debrided down to the sclerotic base. With an assistant maintaining maximal eversion, the guide pin is placed centrally and perpendicular to the chondral surface. An acorn reamer is used both to size the lesion and to create a recipient socket deep enough to remove the sclerotic base. In this case, a 10 mm reamer is used. The graduated reamer and dilation tool are useful to generally evaluate the depth of the socket. A pre-cut plastic operative ruler is also used to obtain more specific and accurate measurements in all four quadrants. An allograft plug is obtained, and the depth is similarly marked along the cancellous edge in four quadrants corresponding to the socket. The plug is cut to length. The sharp, bony edges of the allograft plug are gently tapered with a rongeur to ease insertion. Pulse lavage of the cancellous bone helps to remove any residual immunogenic factors. The plug is inserted by hand and gently impacted until seated. A flush position is desired. A maximum of 1 mm step off is acceptable but discouraged. The malleolus is reduced and guide pins are reinserted into the pre drilled holes. A reduction clamp compresses the osteotomy. The reduction is assessed with particular attention to the plafond using fluoroscopy. Once an anatomic reduction is confirmed, partially threaded screws are inserted for fixation. The flexor sheath anterior capsule and the skin are closed. The patient is placed into a post-operative LNU splint or a cam boot with strict non-weight bearing. The weight bearing is restricted until a stable union of the osteotomy is obtained. Gentle non-weight bearing range of motion promotes chondral nourishment and it may be initiated within a few days of surgery or as late as four weeks postoperatively, and is titrated to patient compliance. Beginning six weeks postoperatively, the patient is advanced from partial weight bearing to weight bearing as tolerated, assuming healing of the osteotomy. Strengthening and non-impact exercises are initiated between three and six months after surgery. At six to 12 months, the patient is advanced to impact exercises and athletics as tolerated. Following surgery, this patient demonstrated a stable union of his medial malleolus osteotomy and has since returned to normal activities of daily living and early sporting activities without any residual complaints. The outcomes for osteochondral allograft transplantation to the talus have been relatively promising. Survival rates range from 66 to 100% at midterm follow-up. That being said, there is a relatively high rate of complication with up to 50% of patients requiring reoperation within the first 13 years after surgery. Graft subsidence or collapse, delamination of the graft, progressive degenerative changes, and symptomatic or prominent hardware are all common issues. Commercially available allograft plugs have decreased the length and technical difficulty of the procedure, have eliminated donor site morbidity, and also demonstrate good outcomes. This is again Dr. Michael Zakili for NYU Langone Medical Center. Thank you for your interest in this case.